G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today I'm going to have a look at a live centre that Banggood have sent me. It's in Morse Taper 2. Well, I got it to use on the 7x12 mini lay that I've reviewed recently and also to use on the Shorblin in the heavy uh, tail stock that it's got. It's got a lighter tail stock, an original tail stock, which is Morse Taper 1. And uh, I've always just got by with that, but anyway, it would be good to have a Morse Taper 2. So I looked at their range of uh, live centres, and they've got quite a, a good range, and some rank, you know, are rated better than others as far as user reviews. This one rated very well, but the main reason I got it is because it's got a different shaped uh, end on it, nose on it, and uh, it's quite different to any of the other live centres that I've got. And I've got probably three or four, I suppose, you know, overall, from zero, one, up to three. So, OK, I'll put up some screen grabs and you can see what we're going to be looking at. And here it is. It comes in a plastic box, as I usually do. Wrapped up. Now it looks, initially, it well, looks really nicely made. Okay, I'll take it out of the bag and we'll have a closer look. Just to put things into perspective, this is a Morse 3. This is a Morse 1. And here's the new new boy on the block, Morse 2. Now, the main difference, well, the obvious difference is that the, the way they've done the, the nose on it is, is quite different. And I went for that design because, to my mind, it looks like it would offer a lot more clearance than a regular cone-shaped nose. You know, when you're working in close on the end of a, of a piece of stock, it's very easy to run the, the tooling against the cone. You can see on here it's marked. I mean, this is 20, 20, <laughs> 20 years old. It's done a lot of work. But, you know, the way they've done this, by having the smaller point, and let's face it, only the very nose at the very tip of the point is actually going to be going into the recess you've drilled with the centre drill in the end of the stock. That's on solid stock. And it's only where you've got tubing, where, you know, tubing would say come back to here, that you would need, well, you would preferably use the, the full cone shape. But then if you look at this uh, setup here, the, cone, the tubing can still come back to here. It's, uh, once again, it's not a tube centre, uh, but it, it looks to have a lot better clearance for the tooling than, than this sort. The other thing I like about this a lot is that, now bear in mind this is, this is Morse 1. Look how much bigger it is than Morse 1 very little, very little bigger size dimension in the body. When you go to Morse 3, look how much bigger it is. And once again, that's a clearance issue. If you're, if you're coming in from the side with your um, tool post, it can easily foul against the edge of the, of the, of the centre as you're coming in, up, ver up near the very end of the job. That's always been an issue, and quite often I will use a, a, a dead centre, a long dead centre, in, in a uh, in the tail stock, because that way you haven't got the body with the bearing race in it, which is going to obstruct your tool post, your compound coming in. 
So yeah, initially I think this is a, a great idea and I can't see any downside to this because that should be, I think, plenty strong enough to do the job. And yeah, I do like the dimensions. The dimensions are, are fantastic. Uh, this is a bit of an issue. As far as the, the nose is concerned, I can't feel any any movement whatsoever. And there's no roughness at all. It's beautifully smooth. Excellent. The actual specifications of this look really good, as good as you could hope for. And of course it's got a 60 degree tip as you'd expect. And they rate the load capacity at 220 pound, which is more than enough. And the run out, well they've got a very, very low figure, 0.000197, so thou. So that's, <laughs> I'd have to get my converter going to see what that is in millimetres, but it's certainly extremely low. Now they say that this is designed for CNC lathe work. Well that may be the case, but there's nothing to stop you using this design in a normal lathe. And as I said, as I said the, the clearance issues are the, the major advantages with this type of chuck. Small diameter, uh, slightly longer nose, and reduced uh, cone shape, so it's like a stepped cone in effect, whereas it would normally come across on an angle to, to the edge, basically it, that doesn't happen. So the actual, the centre cone is, is, is quite a lot smaller. Triple ball bearing, triple ball race, as you'd expect with this size centre, when you go to the bigger ones like my Morse 3, that would have a tapered roller bearing and a and a ball race. But these all these small ones have triple or um, sometimes even just two ball races. So yeah, you definitely want to go for triple. So there'd be two radial and, and one thrust ball race. The machining on this is first class. It looks absolutely beautiful. They've done a really nice job on it. It's etched on live center MT2. But yeah, it looks first class. Really nice. The tape is not drilled on the end for a tang, an ejector tang, so you can't screw that in. But it's short enough that it should suit the mini lathe really well because mini lathes don't like a long taper uh, or you know with a, a long tang on it otherwise you can't ex retract the quill far enough for, for regular use I find so this should suit the the mini lathe well it remains to be seen if it will eject on the on the shoreblum or not but anyway we'll try that next you can see on the 7x12 that I've got a drill chuck in here on a Morse 2 and it ejects in that position there because I've ground the, the tang off on this because otherwise the quill would be further out so that's not too bad that's you know reasonable and uh, it does the job so we'll, we'll put in the new one It's pretty much a similar position, so that's not bad. So that ejects nicely. Yeah, that's good. Let's try it on the Shoreblum 102. Take out the, the collet truck. Oh, that's good. Oh, no, it's not. It won't eject. Mmm, hasn't got enough tang length. Well, it hasn't got a tang. So I can't use it in the 
I can't use it in the in the sorbonne. Not as it is, so it means I'll have to drill and tap to the end of it. So if I do want to, ever want to use it in this, I can screw in a uh, an ejector tang. The issue of the fact that this won't eject on the Shorblum is the same as I had with this ER32 collet chart where it wouldn't eject on the Shorblum either. In both cases, the taper the tape is uh, pretty much similar length. This one's slightly longer, and you can see that I, I've put a screw in the end of the, of the taper, so it would eject. That just acts as an ejector tang. It's not even tight. You can make it whatever length you like. It just sits there. Now this one, this one was threaded to take that originally, but in this case you don't have that luxury, that feature. So be warned that this may not eject in the normal fashion on your on your metal lathe. It ejects fine on the mini lathe and in fact it's perfect for the mini lathe because quite often the tangs are too long in these on these quills. So yeah, if you're going to use this on your lathe, be warned you may have to drill it, tap it, and put a screw in the same as I've done there. It's a minor inconvenience and it's quite easily done. And yeah. That's the one thing you've got to watch out with this. Okay, that's the run out. Now that's, bearing in mind that's with my test piece in it, which uh, may not be 100% centred as far as the end hole goes. I can't vouch for that. That's the reading we're getting, which is, well, pretty good. I mean, you have to do this with a load on it. It's no good measuring it <laughs> unloaded because the, there'll be a certain amount of slop in the in the race. I would estimate the run out at 0 0.004. So that's pretty damn good. I mean, it's certainly good enough for, for home hobby use. Yeah, it's, it's quite acceptable. Particularly at this price range, you know, you're talking very, very cheap live centre. So yeah, I'd say 0 0.004 is a pretty good estimate. You can see those clearance issues are not a problem here. I can come in on this quite small diameter job and the tool post is not hitting the, the, uh, the centre. So that's good. Still got plenty of clearance. So I can pretty much come right into that that section there and I've still got clearance. Which is exactly what I wanted. That's that's fantastic. So what do I think of this live center? I think it's absolutely excellent. It's fantastic. I love that nose on it. I think that is the bee's knees. I had no clearance issues with the, the tooling, as you saw. And in this case, I had no clearance issues with the four-way tool holder. I think this is a much better option than the, the standard conical tips noses I've got to 
I've got to give this a full score for sure. And I really do like it to the extent that I'll have to have a look around and see if we can get this this style in more three and I might upgrade my more three on my big lathe because this is just so much more useful gets around most of those clearance issues that you that you have. I think it's first class. It's been a while since I've done a review and it's certainly been a worthwhile one. Anybody with a 7x12 lathe particularly, I think this is absolutely perfect. So there you have it. It's a, a great live centre. I love that profile. I think that that nose is excellent. Extra length, extra clearance for the same size body basically in, the, in this case. Yep, I'd definitely go for this over that any day. Now the link for this product is in the video description. Go and have a look, see what you can uh, find. They're doing a special at the moment. How long it's going to last, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I certainly recommend this. It's, uh, it's a great product. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.